This episode of the Course Ground Podcast has been brought to you by Central Sports and Graphics Incorporated, family-owned and operated screen printing and embroidery business located in a historic storefront on Old Berwick Road in the heart of Espy. They've been doing screen printing for over 20 years. They have high-quality product at a low price. Be sure to check them out. Central Sports and Graphics Incorporated, 570-784-1212. Now, on to the show. Hey, this is Chef Justin Sutherland, and you're listening to Sean on the Course Grind Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Course Grind Podcast once again with you as always this evening, host, creator, Sean Rossler. Episode number 171. It's getting ridiculous. I almost almost want to shy away from the numbers, but then again, the numbers sound impressive. So episode number 171, back once again. You know, the newfound focus that we've kind of taken on here, it's strong. And I wanted to take a moment and thank you, the listeners, the audience, for reaching out and letting me know that. And you have in droves, like it's weird. Uh, it feels not just good, but really good to focus on those in need of having their messages heard loud, and not just folks whose message is already at an 11. Having more and different listeners joining the fray, thanks in part to the OP Radio podcast and my new bestie, Gloria Chabot, has been definitely rewarding. So again, thank you, and enough about me and the show. Once again, we turn to our patron saint of the culinary, Carl Ruiz, for another great guest with a great message and mission And it all begins with the healing power of barbecue, but don't let your cardiologist hear you say that. Tonight's guest is that guy behind an incredible organization, Operation Barbecue Relief. Rather than rewrite the book on them, which trust me, they deserve a damn book and more, I'll let the copy they already have on their site speak for itself, as it's simply amazing. Their mission is to provide comfort to those in need by connecting, inspiring, serving, and educating in communities far and wide, and they value honesty, compassion, and respect for their volunteers and those they serve. OBR was founded in May 2011 in response to a need for tornado relief efforts in Joplin, Missouri. Competitive pitmasters from nine different states, count them, answered the call to feed displaced families and first responders. Together, they were able to serve over 120,000 meals in a 13-day period. This experience of building a network to feed individuals in need has been the inspiration for Operation Barbecue Relief. Usually at this point, kids, I'm coming in with the funny, but I'll be honest. The work these folks do deserves the utmost respect and recognition. So instead of another dad joke, don't worry, they're coming. I'm going to shut up and let the man himself tell us more, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, purveyor of the healing power of barbecue via Operation Barbecue Relief, Stan Hayes. Stan, how are you, sir? Sean, I'm doing great. You know, appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. I, 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 I have no choice. Um, I, I had no choice when presented with this incredible opportunity because obviously you hear, you know, these tragic stories happening and these unsung heroes, and you're one of the unsung heroes, man. Um, so I, I instantly, as soon as Gloria was like, hey, have you heard of this? I'm like, I've heard of it, and I know Guy plugged in with it. And then I read it. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm painfully remiss in not uh, bringing you on. So thanks for joining us. Um, folks new to the show, folks with terrible short-term memories like me, um, starters, mains, and afters, three categories of questions for the guest in question. Starters, we're going to talk about where they came from, what brought them to where they're at, mains, Where are they now? What are they doing? And finally, afters, a little bit more irreverent, a little bit more off the cuff, but no one has been seriously bodily injured in 170 episodes, so I don't see that happening tonight. So without further ado, Stan Hayes, sir, tell me about where and what you grew up eating. Oh, man. You know, I grew up eating, you know, a wide variety of of food. Uh, um, uh, My family spent time abroad. Um, over in Africa and, uh, um, you know, grew up in central Kansas. So you take a mashup between, you know, good hometown, you know, uh, mom, you know, cast iron frying chicken, you know, on, yeah. on Sunday, 
church or a pot roast to then also, you know, on the other side, um, it, it's, uh, one of those things that we, uh, um, you know, my mom would make things like jollof rice or West African, African curry and stuff like that, that she learned when, when, uh, living abroad. Wow. So, wow. You know, wow. And, 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 and what, what took you abroad? What, what took your family abroad? So, uh, yeah, my, so my dad was, uh, had finished his master's, uh, at Kansas State University in agricultural economics. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, Kansas State University has a lot of different programs. Um, to where, uh, you know, um, people that working on their PhD and everything could, um, go and teach in, uh, third world countries at sister, uh, universities, if you will. Oh, um, and okay. And so my dad went in an exchange program, um, to, uh, um, we went to Nigeria wow. and he was, uh, a professor there while working on his, his, uh, um, dissertation and, and everything and, and spent, uh, well, about five years, five and a half years over there. Um, wow. You know, wow. Wow. Well, and, and, and so how many of those five did you spend over there or, or were you kind uh, of after they came back? Uh, all of them. I, I was, wow. There. So, oh, that's incredible. So, so like that, that adds a layer that, you know, if you didn't hear the story, like you just knew Stan Hayes was the guy behind OBR. But, like, I almost wonder if that third world experience really kind of brought your heart forward. I mean, that's getting into the psychology of it. I don't want to get too deep, but that's that's amazing. And so I, I, I definitely have to ask, here you are, a young American kid in a third world country, um, or, or, or setting rather, what kind of an eater were you? Were you picky or did you get adventurous real quick because of that? You know, I... I, I would say I was in between. I mean, I definitely tried some things that, you know, um, my parents would have never, ever really approved of, you know, by whether mm. it was, uh, some of, you know, being in a, uh, I mean, uh, you, you're living in a house right off of, right up, you know, right off the campus yeah. of the college. Uh, that's actually part of the college, but you have, you know, the village right behind you. And, and a lot of those kids and everything that were my age, we played together, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, there's nothing like going over and, and, you know, finding out that, you know, what's being grilled over open fire, you know, that <laughs> was a uh, river rat. Oh you know? my Lord. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, you know, I mean, there was those, uh, you know, every, every Sunday was malaria pill day. Um, oh. uh, you had to take the most God awful tasting, you know, pill that you ever had in your life oh as a kid. God. Um, but, you know, there was a lot of, you know, we, uh, my dad being a farm kid and, and, yeah. you know, what he was doing there and, and, and working with uh, the villages on, on the agricultural side. Um, we, you know, we had a fair garden. We, we uh, raised our own chickens, uh, yeah. you know, things like that. So, um, you know, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of also normalcy at the same time where, you know, Mom was sitting, was able to sit there and fry fried chicken. You know, she yeah. was she did things like that. But at the same time, you had um, uh, bean cakes. You know, mm -hmm. um, Nigeria mm -hmm. is a British colony. Yeah. You know, uh, was British colonized. So, um, you know, tea was a big, was still a big thing when I was a kid, um, where there was tea time and right. and. Um, so, I mean, you 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 definitely got it. And, and as I got older. Um, I had an opportunity my senior year of high school to go back and spend two and a half weeks with my dad over there. Oh, nice. And, and uh, you know, I, 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 there I would say I became very adventurous. Um, and, and, uh, you know, it, it's funny. My, my biggest, one of my biggest memories of being back there was going to a Mandarin restaurant. I mean, that's the name. It was a, it was called something Mandarin. Okay. And walking in to find that, the only thing Mandarin in there might have been the clothing because, it, you know, <laughs> and your waiters are, are, you know, um, African and, and, uh, you might have had a chef that, that was there that was, you know, Mandarin, um, that was cooking. Right. 
but they're in very colorful, you know, silk type shirts and stuff that it, it just was, it was, it, it was odd, you know, That's... it's not what you, you, you imagine, but it was fantastic yeah. food. And, and, uh, you know, it, it's funny to say that you went there and you had Mandarin food, but at the same time we went to, you know, uh, a place that, um, my parents told me about when I was a little kid, but they went, that was still open, mm-hmm. you know, 14 years later call uh, that was uh, a Lebanese restaurant. Oh, wow. Um, okay. And so, um, it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like every, you know, any international, you know, country, you know, with the, the cuisine, it's not, it's not just the, uh, um, not just that the local fare. No, uh, so yeah, for sure. It's almost like they, they, they weave a tapestry of the folks yeah. who have either come and stayed or come and left, but, the, but they leave with something. So, Taking that into account, this see, this is cool because a lot of times the origin story is like, okay, I was planted here. This is what I come from. You've got these two kind of disparate, you know, places where you grew oh. up. Um, well, then, then to add in, where I grew up in central Kansas, it's, it's a little Swedish town called Lindsborg, Kansas. Oh, okay. And, okay, so it's not just farmer. This is – now we've got so, Swedish in the mix. Holy shit. Yeah, Lindsborg is <laughs> – is known as Little Sweden, USA. So then you now you get into you know potato sausage, and you're getting into Swedish meatballs, and then you get into you know pickled herring and all of the things, uh, um, lingonberries to ustakaka to you know um, something that I never ever tried and never you know still is on the list of won't do. Um, and and uh, and lutefisk. Lutefisk. Um, I was literally just going to ask you. So yeah, is no. loot fisk part of your daily regimen? Thank God. Uh, hey, Please don't. Hey, Ugh. No, no, actually, um, you go back, uh, you know, when I go back to Lindsburg, uh, there's one little, uh, one little grocery store yeah. there in town and you can buy, um, loot fisk there dried. You know, oh, get out of here. Stop. Dried. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, every time I go there, I, I, I threaten to buy some and try to bring it back and reconstitute it, but I just can't even nope. do it. No nope. stories of of my of my my friends that you know who have who still have like family in, in Sweden. <laughs> yeah, um, at, at, I, I've been to their Christmas parties and mm-hmm. stuff where Mm-mm. where they they have it out and they don't even need it. You know, <sighs> they have it out because it's a family. It's a it, it's it's a tradition. But yeah, you know, I. Do the pickled herring. I can do uh, most everything. Um, I actually had a friend of mine came through a couple of weeks ago and brought me a brought me a Kringle, um, a, a Swedish pastry. Oh, nice. Um, okay, it was fantastic. I like hit it for my family and just had it, you know, every morning for breakfast with coffee. <laughs> nice, so. nice. And, and and so I do feel the need to step back because I'm sure there are listeners with furrowed brows going. What is loot fisk? Is it like pig Latin for flute? No, it's not pig Latin for flute. Loot fisk is a painfully. Now I'm going to try to explain it. Stand yeah. and then you help me out here. It is a painfully fermented, borderline rotted fish product. Correct. <laughs> like, there's no nicer way to put it, right? <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, back in the day, they used to they preserved it with lye. Yeah, which is. If not, you know, if, if you don't do things correctly, I mean, lie is... You're dead. You know, You're dead. Your stomach's I, getting a hole in it. <laughs> um, and and if you if you watch, uh, you know, like Andrew Zimmern and, and people like that, because he's up in Minnesota with a big, you know, uh, um, Swedish, Norwegian population, he, yeah. he's been to places up there that, especially around the holidays, will serve it. But um, he probably explains it the best. I because I've never eaten it. I can't. I, I I can't even say I picked it up. I mean, it smells bad enough. Just you know, you know the smell of it. Yeah. Um, that. It, but um, back. Oh, uh, it would have been back in the early 1900s uh, around one of the world's fairs. Um, Sweden sent over a bunch of it, and it was in a rail car. And uh, the story goes that it was in like Chicago area. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was stopped, and the smell was so bad that they thought whatever was in there was rotten. Oh, Jesus. That it, it was thrown out, and it never made it to the World's Fair to, um, I don't know if it was in Minneapolis that year or where it was. Oh, man. Um, but that World's Fair, 
um, didn't get the loot fisk that was shipped over for it, um, specifically for uh, you know that that's the Swedish portion of of it. Um, and yeah. uh, I mean, the old timers will still talk about that. You know, things about how bad that is. Mm-hmm. That you know, everyone it was rotten, so they threw it out. It's. It, um, I mean, it, it it really is. It makes durian seem like yeah. durian's taking a shower and put cologne on. Like it's. <laughs> It, it, it's pretty haggard. So, so you have this Swedish African Midwest blend, which is out of this world. Um, and obviously we know present day. This is how we know Stan Hayes. We know Stan Hayes as the culinarian, as the humanitarian behind OBR. But I have to wonder, you know, growing up, who was your greatest culinary influence? You know, obviously here you are now. We know which way you lean. You lean in the culinary. Who really kind of put that stamp on you most? Uh, it's got to be my grandma. Um, my mom's mom was a, a, an amazing cook. Um, she, you know, it wasn't fancy, but it was good. I mean, yeah. she's, the, she's the lady that, you know, at, 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 you know, you'd be at grandma's house sleeping and you, you know, five o'clock in the morning, the lights are coming on mm. and she's sitting there making homemade cinnamon rolls for breakfast, mm. you know. Um, and, and, uh, you know, five o'clock you're up seeing, uh, I would be there with my grandma. I'd be the only one up Yeah. and, you know, as she's making her cinnamon rolls, um, you know, she, she also had a huge garden. She loved to garden. And so it was, there was always fresh vegetables. Well, you know, I'm, 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 I, I would say that, you know, you asked how adventurous I am. There's a lot of people that, you know, don't, you know, don't like things like beets, but I grew mm-hmm. up with my grandma roasting beets and and beets all summer long. Um, I, I I just love them, and yeah. and uh, um, so uh, you know she had this wonderful garden, and uh, she didn't make you know these these elaborate you know uh, meals. They were just good, stick to the bones. You know um, whether it was you know. Uh, her her idea of barbecue chicken was was she did a barbecue chicken in the oven. Okay, this, okay, <laughs> I get it. Ever, you know, that's my mom tried it. You know, did the same thing she said her mom did. It never turned out. No, know? no, but, and, and 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 you know, to your point about beets, and it's funny. My mom's here with us this week, and you know, my mom used to tout Brussels sprouts, for example. And what she would do is what I call the Catholic exorcism method. You put them in a pot with some water and boil the hell out of them. That's not how you make them. That's not really how you make love to a Brussels sprout or to a beet. It takes effort and it doesn't have to be fancy to your point. Like, you know, if you put in the work and you know what you're doing with the mechanics of that root vegetable, there's a reason people don't like beets. And it's kind of like why most diners don't like organ meats. They're gamey. Okay, how do we get rid of the gaminess? How do we get rid of the rootiness? And that's what somebody who's willing to get up at five and start to peel the beets and start to roast them early so that they can be in there nice and low and slow, eight hours worth. There's there's where your flavor comes out. So good yeah. good on you, Grandma. We like you. We like you. Um, Taste. It, it just tells me that they just haven't had them done right. Exactly. Because- oh, exactly. I, I, exactly. As soon as people, I've actually turned a handful of friends around on Brussels sprouts. I'm like, listen, coconut oil, olive oil, equal parts, um, some some bacon ends. Which, by the way, kids, if you're looking for a good budget cut that adds flavor to everything, oh, yeah. don't get bacon. Get bacon ends. Do the knife work yourself. Don't be lazy. Pick up the knife. Learn a couple strokes. Make lardones and let them go. Let them go to work. And the outcome is phenomenal. Anyway, anyway, this is your show, not mine. Um, so I got to ask you, Stan. So this tapestry, which is just insanity, we know leads to OBR. How did this tapestry lead you to OBR? How did it lead you to be a pit master, a barbecue guy? Like, talk to me. So, yeah. You know, I- I tell people, you know, um, I probably was 15 years old before I, I, I realized that um, barbecue chicken on the grill wasn't supposed to be charred black. Because, you know, <laughs> I, I, 
true. Put it on the grill, and he yeah. would start basting it like you know five minutes on the grill. Yeah. And by yeah. the time you know you got done, it, it was this charred black, you know, chicken. Yeah. But I, I just remember those days of sitting out there with my dad while we're cooking around the grill and, and always being somewhat fascinated, you know, whether it was, you know, my grandma making the, you know, the cinnamon rolls or what mm-hmm. they, you know, all those different steps. And, and so I started gravitating towards, you know, grilling probably, you know, late in high school, um, playing with fire as I started calling it. And, <laughs> uh, it just, it just continued, you know, uh, I remember buying my first grill. I, out of college when I got my first big boy job and, you know, um, moving up to a, you know, the, the Brinkman smoker, that was the worst, you know, the worst thing you could ever keep. <laughs> yeah, any heat that's on. true. That's true. You know, I, but, I, I, you know, I have to ask quick Stan, what was the first job? The first grill I got? No, no, no. It, Your first job that got you that first grill. Uh, so at, out of college, um, I spent a couple of months trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And I, uh, I ended up uh, taking a job as a claims adjuster um, for farmer's insurance right out of college. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, um, I spent almost 24 years there moving up through the company in different different uh, jobs on the claim side and then eventually moving over to the marketing and and uh, um, field distribution side gotcha. uh, of the business. And that's actually I, – I, so I – my, this is my second job that I've ever had. I love um, that. Out of college. that's you know I left uh, I left farmers um, with you know um, to just a little over three years ago I left farmers to start running OBR full time. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. And so um, I have to ask, did you have anything to do with the jingle "We Are Farmers" or no? no I had nothing to do with God that. Damn it, Stan! <laughs> It, that that came out while we were there, and you can only imagine I, you had his ringtone for our phones and stuff like that when we were. <laughs> I, that's the last thing I want. I, I I still I still have to go into the marketing mindset though and wonder why the like the dickhead teacher from Whiplash is your face like that 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 had to create some backlash. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like wow. The guy that literally beat a student uh, in a practice, that's that's your guy, but it, 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 it's weird. I finally caught that the full way through, and I'm like, that's the farmer's guy. I like him. <laughs> I don't know if I want to like him now, but I liked him. Past tense. So, such a cool transition, and here we are present day. You're doing it full time, which I think is just rad beyond human comprehension, um, you know, because you and I share that we're both involved with wildfire response in California, um, yep. which is I- I- incredible. So here in the mains, kids, those of you who've listened for longer than one or two episodes, you're going to notice some different questions here. Because obviously, I can't go with the standard canon, which is good, I think. Change is good. Um, so what led you... To decide, and y- y- I almost feel like maybe we connected a dot here tonight that, you know, maybe it was that upbringing in Nigeria. Who knows? What made you decide that barbecue was the way to go with helping any population in struggle? I mean, that's that's kind of what I feel like the motto is. Any populace in struggle. Yeah, so, you know, why barbecue? Uh, yeah, you know, I... I started moving around the country, mm-hmm. um, you know, learning more about grilling, cooking over fire, and you know, bought my first smoker, uh, big boy smoker, as I called it, um, <laughs> and uh, and for Christmas, uh, my first year, our first year in Texas, my wife, you know, in my card said, "Hey, you know, there's a barbecue contest on this date, and I'm going to pay to enter you in this contest." Oh, I love to- it. Oh. And I was like, well, that sounds really good, but I have no idea what the heck I would be doing in a competition <laughs> yet. Right. So why don't we go visit the competition? Because I don't want to go and really just show up there and really not know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. So we go to a VFW hall um, outside, you know, Round Rock, Texas, Austin, Texas area. And uh, we pull, you know, we pull up there and we walk in and my wife's like, she thought, you know, 
she thought my my smoker was you know sort of big you know sort of cool and she walked in she's like man you get your butt kicked if <laughs> you were, that little thing with all these big old stick burners and all that she's like oh my god you'd get laughed out of the place it's a um, good thing i didn't enter you in this yeah. and and we spent a little time and you know we weren't in austin that long we were only there a couple of years but i started learning more and more about you know um Texas, you know, brisket, you know, beef, the to Kansas City. Mm. And that's when I started meeting people that were in the competition world. Yeah. And and I got into competition barbecue. Um my first barbecue contest, I slept like two hours. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was hooked. I talked to my wife on the way driving home and it was in central central Missouri in, in the Ozarks. Okay. So I'm driving home. She's like, I, I've got stuff to do, you know? Uh, and I was like, honey, I, I haven't slept. If you don't talk to me, I'm going to run into one of these, you know, oh my God. you know, 200 year old Oaks and, you know, oh. die. You know? Um, so I made her talk to me until I got to like a four lane road, you know? <laughs> and, and, uh, but I was hooked, you know, that's what yeah. I found is I was hooked. It was, it was about the competition. It was about the exhilaration, but it was also about the people that I met that, that, that weekend. Yeah. So, so you meet these folks and, and I have to wonder, you know, as OBR comes into focus, you know, how many of those original nine did you meet because of this? And I almost wonder if it's all of them. So, so I, I when OBR started down in Joplin and we put the call out essentially to, you know, the barbecue community and, and to come out and, and let's support Joplin and cook for them. Um, uh, I, the, a good core group that showed up in Joplin the first, you know, the first couple of days were people that, you know, uh, as I call them, the barbecue family that we would compete together or against each other. Um, and, but as it started, you know, people started coming from Arkansas, from Texas, Oklahoma, um, Georgia, Pennsylvania, um, mm-hmm. Illinois, all of a sudden, you know, Tennessee, all of a sudden you started getting people way outside of, you know, where I was going for competition. I wasn't driving any more than a couple hours from home. Right. Uh, well, I wasn't seeing these people. These were, these were people that had the same heart you know, to give back, um, that, you know, frankly, I, I tell everybody, I wish I could say it was my idea, but it was my wife's. She's the one that said, Hey, you should go to Joplin and get your barbecue friends together Yeah, and just cook for the community. And I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. That is a great and, idea. And Stan real quick as a guy who's almost married 20 years, it's always her idea. Please uh, don't even try. It's well, always years, her idea. Uh, I, I, I know 20 years last month for me. Oh, so, congratulations, dude. Nice. Yeah. So, so yes, you know, and, and I make it, you know, I, I, I tell everybody the story about it being her idea because in the early years when I was traveling and using vacation to go do OBR things or go speak about OBR at a convention or, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And she would, she would bitch at me because I was gone and because <laughs> I was, I'm using my vacation and everything. Yeah. I always reminded her who I, whose idea it was. Ow. Oh, oh, oh. And, and, that's, and, that's and, dangerous, and that, man. It is dangerous. It is dangerous. <laughs> it, it doesn't work very well, no. but, you know, um, but you know, it, it, it was it was really the only you know only thing that I had to combat the uh, you know combat it with because yeah. uh, you know, the, the, the times of being gone. I but, I, you know, I totally applaud your courage uh, <laughs> on that move for sure. So so you start to start to meet these people. You go to Joplin, and and, and if we fast forward, man, the work you've done has taken you to places and put you in contact with people, which. Is just amazing. So, talk to me about the present day landscape of OBR. You know, we yeah. we know its mission, but like, what have you done? What are you doing? Yeah. So, I mean, at at this point in time, it's 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 really our, our it, it's grown to the point of um, how do you you know one sustainability, right? You sure. you got to be able to sustain you know the model and and the model really has not changed greatly since Joplin I mean um, a, a lot of the basics that we put into place at, at the early, in the early years um, are are you know part of the bedrock of the organization I mean things such as 
you know, when people start becoming choosy on what the meals are, you know, it's time for you to transition, you know, and let mm. the community start taking over again. Yep. Cause that's when the healing begins. If somebody's like, you know, are you serving that, you know, pulled pork sandwiches again today? Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. not, they're not as hungry as they once were. Exactly. exactly. So it gives you an opportunity to sit, to transition out because, you know, the, one of the other, the other bedrocks of the organization uh, when we started was, look, I'll feed nine people that really don't need the meal just to get to the 10th person that did. And, and wow. that happens. Wow. We were in par- well, you're in a parking lot, right? You don't know, you know, and, and this happens every year where somebody sees a picture or something and they say, you know, um, last year during the pandemic, the best example I can give is there's a bunch of video and uh, this gentleman pulls in in a Chrysler, th- you know, 300, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we load up the back of his car and he takes off and people, uh, you know, um, people are just start hammering, you know, oh, like that guy needed it and all this. And and I, I, I have a hard time keeping my mouth shut sometimes, especially yeah. on social media. And I'm Not like, here. dude, you don't know the circumstances. So Seriously? why do you open your Yeah, that, that, that. That bugs me. That, that, that bugs me on a lot of different fronts. I've had guests on yeah. who've done like ugly produce programs and that kind of shit. And like, it doesn't matter what they pull up in. Like, I yeah. don't care if I'm going to do something that's good natured and good willed. I really don't give a shit. Like, if if you want to take advantage of it, that'll be on you. Hey, Karma's hell. You, your maker, you know, Karma's a bitch. Whatever we want to call it, right? Exactly. Um, you know, for me in that one, yeah, that was the mayor of the town. And he was probably delivering shit for you, wasn't he? He was taking meals to the firehouse and the police station. And he made a donation because he wouldn't take them for free. But run your mouth, Karen. Go ahead. Jump on Facebook. Run your mouth. Exactly. Go Uh, go piss him a rock. But but that was – in Joplin, that was to our volunteers because they watched a group of people – we were set up at the corner of 7th and Range Line, and 10 years ago, at the corner of 7th and Range Line was mm-hmm. a Ryan Steakhouse in that parking lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And about, I don't know, day three or four, <clears throat> um, a group of people pulled up in the parking lot about 5 o'clock at night, yeah. walked over to go to Ryan's Steakhouse. Yeah. And the doors were still locked. Uh, you know, boil water ban was going on. The general manager had lost his home. Um, one of the assistant managers, you know, we had met those folks. They knew what we were doing out there. They, they were, you know, in fact, some of the, vol- some, some people from the, the there volunteered even with us, oh, nice. um, from, us. so we watched that happen and they came walking over and they get into our food service line. Now I got people want to kick them out of line. I got people that want to do that. I just looked at them. I was like, I'll, I'll feed all four of them just, just because yeah. you don't know the circumstance that might have been they might have spent the last three days pulling out everything that they owned out of the front yard exactly. out of the neighborhood. you don't know and maybe that that was the victory lap to go to that restaurant and to be like exactly let's get back it, it, to they, some they semblance coward, of normalcy they put on yeah you know, exactly so that's when we started that's when i started saying look i'll feed nine people like that just to make sure that the one person that needs it gets it because it's not for me, it's not for you to judge whether that person needs it or not. You know, that's, you know, we can go biblical and say, you know, that's between you and your maker. You know, we can go with karma because it's a bitch. But if a person, what we've seen over the years and what I've noticed is if a person is, you know, humble enough that they're going to go stand in a food service line in a parking lot with other people, they generally aren't doing it. Just because they need a free meal. No, 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 no. And despite despite what people would want to think. Because people ex- get off on that. It's almost like venge porn or something like that. It's like, really? Is that all you have to do with your limited mental bandwidth? Like, relax. If somebody's hungry, if somebody's hungry, take that at face value. I'm going to feed them, man. I don't care if you're off the street, walking up the road. You know, it, 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 I'll feed you. Full stop. Yep. Full stop. Oh, yep. Wow. And, and and from those the, the genesis of the organization in those er, you know those early days that that's come full circle. Like I said, you know we we now use a lot. I mean, 
Now, we're not using our, our competition smokers like we did back then. We're not using it. I mean, we're using large old hickory smokers. You know, we're, we have, if we put every smoker in one parking lot and every one of them was working and we had enough volunteers and we had the meat, I mean, we can do about 60,000 meals in a, in a day Holy in a parking lot. shit, Stan. Really? So, wow. It's, it's just a matter of scale. You know how, you know, if I can put eight, 80 to 90 pork butts or I can do about 2,000 pulled pork sandwiches on that smoker, you know, um, all right, now I got 20 of them sitting, at, you know, out there. Okay, there's 40 pulled pork sandwiches. Well, you're not going to be able to turn pulled pork and do pulled pork twice. But if I start putting pork loins on there, my yield goes down, but I can do that another time. Right. So, right. you know, I can do 20,000 of, you know, pork loins. So now all of a sudden there's 60,000, you know, portions in a day. <laughs> uh, hey, kids, uh, you know, if you want to go to culinary school, make sure your math skills are strong, please. Because you got to oh, do quick math like that, apparently. Oh, well, look, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, I, I, much people, people that are much smarter than me that have been and and doing this much longer than me are are what's made this successful. I mean, you know, it, it is everybody that has you know brought the their expertise um, to help make the organization better. It wasn't me. It wasn't wasn't Jeff. It wasn't Will. The other two co founders, yeah, you know, that said, hey, we're gonna hey, th- here's the great idea, you know. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, going to Joplin was just a bunch of composition guys that said, Hey, let's go help for three or four days, you okay. know? And, you know, 13 days later, you're leaving with 120,000 meals in a parking lot when you thought, man, three or four days and maybe four or 5,000 meals. And I'm going to feel good that I did something. That's where the best ideas yeah. come from though. I mean, I mean, full stop. So, you know, Jesus, I mean, here, here you are feeding the masses. I mean, that's exactly what you're doing and it just it, it it floors me uh that that you have that capacity at the ready and now you're doing doing it full time um talk to me about the next three to five years for obr what does that look like so you know three to five years um as i mentioned earlier before we started the interview about you know um we talk a lot about the gray sky days the disaster work that we do but, you know, there's more blue sky days in a year than there are gray. Right. And our blue sky days, we call our always serving project. And we, we, we focus on those who serve others yes. um, and giving back to them. And we use our passion for barbecue and grilling to give them skills. So we focus on first responders, um, veterans, mi- active military, um, and giving them skills around grilling and barbecue. Um, right now we, uh, the, the class that we teach is called barbecue base, barbecue basic. And it's a two day class that we will take on the road, um, to, uh, two different places. And, uh, you know, you have about, you have about, uh, let's see what, um, five or six teams of four or five, um, that, that work together. Yeah. And we, we come in there, we have, we have specially made carts that have multiple grills on them, has everything that they need on a cart, um, to pull off. And they can, you know, we bring in our culinary team, but we'll also bring in pit masters from the area that we're in, um, to be, uh, uh mentors. That's, that's As, incredible uh, yeah, because that was going to be my next question. You know, barbecue is like gang signs. You're either Kansas or you're Memphis. You're Texas or you're like there's some shit that goes you're down. I don't want to know. Like I, I I think you guys do like late night knife fights. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so bringing that local element in is key. But I gotta ask as we transition into afters, what school are you from, Stan? You know, I, watch I, watch him be political, kids. I'm gonna call it right oh, now. He's gonna be, be like, so "Oh, I'm Switzerland." <laughs> right. So, well, so I'm I'm one of those people that I believe that if it's if it's traditional beef brisket, beef ribs, it, it's Texas. I mean, there's just no one does it better. Okay. It, it, we talk burn ins. No one can touch Kansas City when it comes to you know burn ins. So don't even try. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, I I love you know. 
ribs here in Kansas City, a nice sticky rib, but man, there's just something about about a dry Memphis rib yes. that that is just, I mean, it just sets it apart. Um, and then I will tell you, Sam Jones gave me a a a chopped, you know, pig sandwich uh-huh. one day. Yeah, that that was like life changing. I mean, I thought I knew pulled pork. I thought I knew stuff. Sam uh, at the Big Apple Block Party, you yeah. know, several years ago. Yep. Sam, Sam sat there and made one for me and yeah. and a friend, and I, I just was like, hope. I mean, jeez, this is the <laughs> best thing I've ever eaten in my life. Yeah. Um. Again, that one so, being Memphis style, right? And, and uh, um, you know, it was actually that was North Carolina. Okay. Hog. Okay. And and Sam's Sam's restaurant is in Aiden North uh, Aiden North Carolina. Okay. And and like you watch these guys, I, I, I'll tell you the true art. Those guys, they take they they have a they have a gallon jug of white distilled vinegar, <laughs> got a gallon jug of cayenne, you know, uh, crystals type hot sauce, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and they'll sit there and some rub, and they'll throw the rub down on top of it, and they'll pour that that white vinegar over it. Then they mm-hmm. pour that hot sauce over it and they yeah. chop it up together and then they put it out there and you're like, Oh my God. You know, I do that at home. It tastes like white distilled vinegar and hot <laughs> sauce with salt and pepper thrown on it. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. I it is. What I saw Chopper do. It's magic. <laughs> it's magic, dude. It is. Um, so that's, that's, that's incredible. You know, again, Three to five year plan, the gray sky to the blue sky plan, that that basic class sounds amazing. You know, again, you, you almost wish it didn't have to exist, but since it does, why not make it amazing? And that's clearly what you and your crew are doing. The next step is online classes that people can can do on demand to also you know be able to do this for first responders uh, across the country, veterans, uh, oh, military, sure. where yeah. they can register and go online for because we can do so much more when we're doing things online, especially yeah. this last year, right? If we would have had this going during the pandemic, we could have done so much more, yeah, um, and, and giving back, um, and so that'll open up a lot more. And let's face it, I mean, we're doing this in these communities, so if we ever have to come back to that community, the people that are out there serving, you know, the community, are mm-hmm. the people that we help train in this area, right? That's because right. those first responders, those military, are going to be there in those communities help. Yep. I mean, they're the ones running in when everybody else is running out. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. So um, that connection for us is, is quite strong. Um and then one that that's you know it's it, 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 some people have heard about some people you know if they know the organization and they hear this will think it's crazy but um, we're looking at um, a destination location to be able to have like camps um, we mm. want to do more I, I want to get into I'd love to we're going to get to a point that we're doing field to table camps mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. we work with other organizations that take out veterans and first responders hunting. And then the idea is, you know, they hunt for the first few days and, and we hope to God that if, you know, if it's deer season, that we've got some deers that are, you know, that they're bringing back and that we, we show them the full art from, um, from the, you know, the hunt yeah. to, to the cleaning and, you know, to the butchering, to the cooking, um, and show that evolutionary process that you have that, uh, you know, and, and you have some great guys out there doing that now and, and, and at events, um, you know, Tank Jackson does some with, uh, you know, for whole hogs and, and, you know, from, you know, I mean, uh, the, the, the whole gamut. And, and we want to do that for, you know, deer, <laughs> duck, all these different ones and, and be able to bring people in and, and focus on, you know, those people that are, are our core constituents, the, those first responders. Yeah. And, but one of the things that we're finding, the more that we look at this, that first responders are, are way behind where the military is today when it comes to PTSD, when it comes to, um, just think about the first responders and things they see on a daily basis. For sure. The bad things that they have to go through, and and that it is not normalized at all. 
in first, you know, with first responders, it's, you know, the way it, it, it's 10 years, you know, behind where the military is, where, you know, this big, strong guy can break down and, and, and say, you know, Hey, I need some help here. Yeah. You know, I've seen too much death. I've seen too much this, you know, and, and there is nothing, there's not many, there's a lot of camps out there that you find, but there's not a lot that include the family with the warrior, the family with the service member. Yeah. You know, they, they invite the, you know, that wounded warrior to come out to the camp. They invite, you know, the, the, you know, the brain injuries, the PTSD folks, they invite, but they, they leave the family out and the family's the one that's already been left out so much. Oh my God. I was just going to say, they're the ones that are painfully unaware, not, not due to inaction on their part, but just because that's the way it's been presented to them. So my God, and, and and listen, you know, being from Pennsylvania, I feel like we definitely should, uh, should talk about deer hunting and that kind of thing. Cause we, uh, <laughs> we got a good thing going here. So maybe that's yeah. something we need to, uh, touch base on, man. But Jesus, I mean, it sounds like your plate's full. Um, uh, it's a culinary podcast. No pun intended. <laughs> um, but wow, that's just front to back, dude. Absolutely amazing. Obviously the podcast stands behind you, stands with you. Anything you need from us, we're here for you. So we'll, we'll touch base offline. Um, but I mean, the next three to five sounds even more incredible than present day. So that's awesome. Um, let me ask you some afters here and let you go. Cause I know, I know you're a runner. You probably got to run miles tomorrow. Um, I do too. And I'm like, Oh man. It's going to be a rough run tomorrow, but I love it. I love it. And, uh, we'll, we'll get to the miles tomorrow, but let's get to the afters now. Um, I'm standing with you on the grill stand and we're listening to music and you're DJing. What am I listening to? Boy, um, you know, it's going to be an eclectic, uh, probably a mix because, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm an old school, you know, classic rock guy for all, from Love it. You know, the, the late eighties, nine, early nineties, um, through high school and college. Yep. But, uh, and more of the, more of the, you know, um, old school country and some of the new school stuff mixed in there. Um, okay. I, I'm not as much, you know, I'm, I'm not a new age rock person by any means whatsoever. Sure. Uh, I, I, I would say that, you know, I, uh, out out of college, I you know uh, the country music became much more prevalent. My wife would tell you that's all I listen to. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, if we pulled up a playlist or something out there, you're gonna that's what you'd get a mix of. Okay, you know it is is you know you, you know you might have Hank Williams you know Junior on one of them. The next one could be you know some Metallica going on, and Love the next it. song. Could be, you know, you know, uh, somebody that's a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, you might get an Eric Church song or something okay. like that. I was going to say Luke so, Bryan. You go Eric Church. Yeah, I like that. Um, so, awesome. Okay. All right. So between those two genres, I think we could hang out. I think that's easy. Um, hypothetical situation. I'm going to airdrop you on a deserted island. And you can only bring three foods or food type items with you, be they condiments, equipment, whatever. Um, inexhaustible supply, but only three. What would they be, and why? Well, uh, first would be fire. Love it. Okay, so like, yep. y- yeah, like like flint steel, something something that's a reliable fire source. Yes, got it. Um, that's a barbecue professional, kids. <laughs> I, you know, I I would. I would, you know, I got to have some sort of a protein in there. And I think if I had to eat only one protein mm-hmm. that, you know, um, man, it'd probably be poultry. Um, and, and, and that's, that's the 50 uh, year old version of me talking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why? To, Why don't you want pork? Stan. Version of me talking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, man, the third thing, um, I, it would probably have to be some sort of a pepper. Um, okay. just to have spice, uh, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, even if it was a bell pepper, but I mean, I, I'm thinking more like, you know, in between a poblano, mm-hmm. you know, um, jalapeno type, you know, something that spices it up. So you, now you've got, you know, 
you can play with those things and then, you know, um, you know, that's probably what I would do. I mean, um, you got nothing but time at this point. You're trapped. Yeah. You're not going anywhere. So figure yeah. it out. Unless, unless you decide to, you know, forgo that and, uh, you know, get fishing, you know, get fishing line or something like that. Well, there you um, go. Yeah, uh, well, you could... fish. But I figure, you know, I can make a spear. I can go, you know, uh, you can find that on the island. Yep. Um, so, um, but, you know, uh, if you had to, you, you sit there and eat, you know, jalapeno peppers, I guess. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's the survivalist talking right there. Um, <laughs> Melanie Denea did a book, My Last Supper, and it's a 50 chef book um, where they feature each chef with the same questions. And basically at the core of it all is your ticket's getting punched tomorrow. What are you eating tonight? So Stan Hayes, I ask you, your ticket's getting punched tomorrow. What's your last meal? What are you eating? What are you drinking? Who's there and why? Um... You know, I am, I am probably, if it's my last meal, uh, I'm pro, I'm probably, uh, um, doing it, uh, um, you know, a surf and turf style where I'm going to have, I'm going to have lobster, uh, with a big old ribeye. Yep. Uh, with a, a loaded mash, you know, loaded, um, baked potato. Love it. Um, uh, you know, um, I, I am probably just, you know, I, I'm probably going to pull a Carl Ruiz on, on it and, and I'd have a beer with, uh, with, uh, um, I wouldn't do, a, I, I, I wouldn't do probably a whiskey shot, but I'd probably have some nice bourbon, um, yeah. on the side there with it. I'm right there with you, man. The, the, and, the Jim Beam was a little brave on his part. The constant <laughs> Jim Beam. I'm like, dude, I, I can't, I, I can't. The last time I drank Jim Beam, really was in college and I got my nose broken for it. So I don't want to go into any more of that story, but there you go. There's a story. Um, and, and I, I would say, you know, the, the people that are going to be there besides, you know, my family, um, at that are, are going to be, you know, um, those, those people that I count on, um, when I need something, you know, some of my closest friends, um, that, you know, I, yeah, I, I do a couple of different events each year at my place and yep. those are the people that are, are with me, um, uh, you know, at those. And those are, those would be the people that were sitting at my table with me. Um, yeah. if that was, you know, if I got to choose, yeah. um, and uh, if I get to choose some that are no longer with us, then you know, I, you know, obviously the extended family. You know, I, I'd love to sit there. I'd love uh, the fifty-year-old me would love to sit with both my grandpas. Oh my god, I have thought about that more often than not. Now, you, you know, you, you get a little older. I'm I'm forty-four. You know, you just breached the fifty point, and it's like yep. I wonder what my grandmother would have thought of me. Holy shit! Oh, like. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a little crazy. It'd be a little crazy, but how how cool would that story be to hear? And finally, sir, um, the last question, the simplest and yet the most complex. I ask you, Stan, what is food to you in one word? To me, food is hope. Holy shit. Look at you. That is the first answer, the first unique answer of hope ever. In the show's history, seven years deep, no one's ever said hope. Wow, it's, it's, it's one of the things that we came up with early on when when people say, you know, what does this meal, you know, what does this meal mean to people? What, you know, what do you? And I said, look, it's it, it, it's hope. It shows compassion. You know, it, it reminds them that those good times that they had in their backyard with barbecue with their friends and family. When their house is gone and they have that pulled pork sandwich, if they can think of those times, yeah, and wow. now they 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 have that hope of when they're going to be able to do that again. Good lord, dude! Wow, <laughs> that 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 you, you want to talk about an answer that takes you square in the stones like that right there, and that's everything you do, man. And, and again, I go back to what an honor it is to sit down with you virtually, of course. Um, but wow, what an absolute rock star answer, rock star bow on the box, Stan Hayes of Operation Barbecue Relief, Operation BBQ Relief dot org. Um, 
you're out on the Facebook, out on the Insta, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, we're cool. out on everything. And you know, I think, uh, I don't think we've used it much. We, you know, I know we got a TikTok page going, just, you know, oh boy. You got to look at all the different angles, right? But, you know, a couple of things, you know, that there is uh, every Lowe's store in the United States right now sells Operation Barbecue L- Relief Rub. Um, uh, rubs that we've worked on, six different rubs that we work on that tell, on the rub, tell the story of what we've done in, in the region. So whether it's uh, the Texas salt, pepper, garlic, and talking about what we've done it, you know, after like Hurricane Harvey in Texas or... Uh, my fav- one of my favorite, actually, of the- all of them is uh, called Florida Moho. It's basically a moho. Oh, I love it. The and lime and, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, that pop of citric acid, the cumin, you know, a little. It- I'll tell you what, I knew it was good when Carl looked at me and he's like, oh, my God, <laughs> how did you get this into a, into a, into a powder? Oh, my God, you know? bro. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, I oh, can- yeah, I can hear him right now, man. Oh, and- yeah. God damn, that's that. That's not small praise, buddy. That's well, it, that's it, big it, praise. You know, and and uh, you know, Carl was you know one of those guys that you know he. he I don't know about you, but uh, over the years, that was one of the first. You know, in the morning, drinking a cup of coffee, you pulled up Instagram to see what Carl did the night before. Yes, you know? yes, <laughs> and then I pull up. I'll tell you what, man, and and, and I'll say this: I don't want to, I don't want to steal the glory of your out here, but I'm I'm gonna tell a quick story. I had my Ruizing hat, and the brim was flat, and I posted a picture of it. I was so proud. I'm like, dude, I'm Ruizing, uh, and and Carl instantly is like, bro, I love it. It's sick, blah blah blah. And Vic Goddamn Henley comes in. You gotta bend your brim, Bailey Ray. I'm like, holy shit, what are you doing? And like, they went back and forth at each other over my oh, hat picture, and I'm like. This might be the coolest moment of my life. Maybe not. Parenting is probably cool, but um, uh, it, it was yeah. a really cool moment. Anyway, um, goddamn. Um, Operation BBQ Relief dot org, Facebook, Insta, etc. This this one's the one I want to broadcast now. Go to Lowe's tomorrow. Get some rub. Support this incredible cause for the love of God, people. You know, you have somebody who answered hope on food. Stan gets it. OBR gets it. Stan Hayes of OBR, Operation Barbecue Relief. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight, buddy. Hey, you know, again, th- this has been a lot of fun. I-, oh. I greatly appreciate the opportunity. I would I would agree, but that would be so self-indulgent. So I'll definitely agree. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode number 171, can you believe it, of the Course Grind Podcast with me again this evening, the Stan Hayes of Operation Barbecue Relief, Check them out on the .org, on the Facebook, on the Insta, and go pick up their rubs tomorrow. Please, they're amazing. Our producer, as always, has been the lovely, voluptuous Johnny Leland Robinson, a.k.a. the Reverend Johnny Lamoria. Be sure to check out all his libertarian and politicking happenings in the 18431. The next episode is going to be number 172. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss it. Are you passing through central Pennsylvania and looking for one of the best dining experiences and craft brew menus around? Look no further. Turkey Hill Brewing Company at 991 Central Road in Bloomsburg, PA has everything you could ask for and then some. Service, food, beer together, unbelievable. Be sure to check them out. Call them today for reservations, 570-387-8422. Call today.